Hey, just welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I'm going to do some odds and ends uh, for the uh, 125 Yamaha MX. And I've kind of, I've done some assembly. It's not permanent assembly. It's just, it's mocking up to see where we're at and see where we need to go. And I'm seeing some issues right away. So let me go, let me go down there to the bike and show you what's going on. And then we'll get into some of the specifics here. As you can see, I've got it up on the stand and it's pretty well mocked up. I've got the longer forks up here and they are long. Uh, and I've run into an issue here where uh, the handlebars, I can't bring them down anymore. So I've, I've ordered a, uh, a triple three for a 78 Yamaha and they have the uh, handlebar clamps angled back so that I can move this up I'm hoping that's what it looks like in the picture not real sure just see how it works so and I may not need to do it but it just looks like it's going to be tall right now I've got a set of Kawasaki shocks on here and they're an inch longer than the Yamaha's. These are uh, 13 inch and the Yamaha's of course are 12 and I think from what people tell me and stuff that I've read that you're gonna have to go with at least with 13 and a half if not 14 inch shocks and I can see a couple issues already. Uh, I'm gonna have to put the engine in here so I can get it mocked up to where the counter shaft sprocket is. I want to know whether or not I'm going to need to put a roller on here to keep the chain out of the swing arm. I think I'm going to. And with all this extra travel, actually it's not a lot of extra travel, I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably going to have maybe five inches instead of the three and a half or whatever was on it before. But you can see the uh, the modification to the swing arm here. Uh, of course, like I say, I think I'm going to have to put a roller up here and put a uh, uh, probably a spring-loaded guide. I this thing here is the original one. I'll have to extend this end just a little bit. I can probably just cut it right here, put a piece in. But if I do the roller type or the uh, spring loaded type, I won't be able to use this one. So I think that's kind of where I'm going to end up. So I'm, right now I'm, I'm going to uh, work on a fender mount that's going to go up here. I need to make a couple of, uh, of uh, spacers to come off there about a half inch. And when we come around the other side, since we lengthen the swing arm an inch and a half, we're going to have to do the same thing to the brake rod. And I've got to make the new brake stay that's going to come up to under here. So I'm, I've got welding to do there, probably welding to do over here. So it's going to be a while before I get this uh, painted and get it for sure ready. But it's looking pretty good, almost looks like a chopper here, but uh, I think once I get the right shocks on there and get this so that I can lower it maybe another inch, that's all. I'm, I've got it lowered probably uh, a half, if not, you know, maybe three-eighths to a half. And I think it's going to need about an inch or an inch and a half total just to kind of bring it in line, but we'll see what the, what the new shocks do too. I just, I'm trying to figure out what shocks to use. So I've got some feelers out on that. And uh, like I say, I've got the, I got to build the brake stay, the brake rod, the fender uh, spacers, and I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, fabricate a roller for the chain to come up but I'm, I really need to get the get a engine in here so I can tell where that counter shaft sprocket is 
that's going to make all the difference. Because here, this this right now is down all the way, but that doesn't, uh, you know, it's probably going to go down more when I put a longer shock on it. So it's kind of a mood point right now to be trying to fabricate something for something I don't have all the pieces for yet. But just to let you see here, it looks like the swing arm did okay as far as uh, uh, not flexing or uh, pulling from the welding. Everything's looking real good. It, it bolted right in. It's well centered in the, in the frame. And I think that's, that's about all I can tell you right now. So let's just get on with the uh, manufacture of the spacers. I just want to kind of show you what I came up here with. This is a, an old timey period uh, fender bracket. And I wished it was a Yamaha one. I've seen some, but they're just too expensive for me. So I think I'm going to make this one work. And I'll do a little polishing up of it eventually, but right now I need two spacers to come off right here. And uh, then we'll be able to kind of mount it on the, on the forks and just see what it's going to look like. So let's get on with that. I'm just going to make these out of a piece of aluminum here. You've seen me do a, this kind of stuff quite often. Before I do anything, I'm just going to face this off just a little bit so that it's straight. And then we'll drill it. Just going to drill this to five sixteenths. I'd say I'm making two of them, so uh, they're about you know, what were they? Six six fifty a piece. Point six fifty. These just need to have a 8 millimeter bolt go into them, which that does just fine. And we'll just turn this down. We don't need that much, that big a one. Good thing about being made from aluminum, we won't have to treat it with anything to keep it from rusting. So it's just build and play. All right, let's get this cut off.
one. All right, just kind of loosely mounted there. Kind of looking about right. It may have to come down just a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. That's what the trial and error stuff's all about, getting it all fitted up. There's our uh, brake stay. We just got to drill it now. Smashed it down on each end with the press.
Okay, this is the front stay for the brake stay. It'll go up there and be welded in place. Just like that. And of course, the other end goes down here. <clears throat> got just a slight bend on one end here just to facilitate it to fit the uh, plate there so it's be looking about like that I'll have to get it tacked on up here I want to show everybody what we're dealing with this morning. About zero degrees and uh, just some light snow. It is Christmas Day in Montana. Okay, we're making the uh, brake rod. All I had was some quarter inch rod. So I had to turn the, uh, the rod down about 20 thousandths to, uh, get it, to get it small enough to put a uh, six millimeter die onto. So I've got, I've got the uh, Threading done. And we'll just hit it briefly with a with a file to take the rough edges off. Feels better. Okay, I like I say this is an extended an extended rod. I made it a little longer than what I think I need. Uh, I put just a hair more threads on it, but this is the next thing I've got to do. I've got to uh, put a that's basically a washer. So that the spring will uh, will stop right there. So I need to put that on, and then we'll work on this uh, bracketry down here on the end and get our total length. Okay, gonna just kind of rough this up a little bit. I'm gonna try to silver solder that washer on there. Take a little acetone and give it a final wipe. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this or not, but I'm going to try. This is uh, silver solder and it takes a, a flux. I've got a little mark on here where it needs to go. There it is, right there. washer on there. So where'd my mark go? I just want to try to try to get it in about the same place.
I think we got her. I just couldn't keep it straight, but I think it'll do it. Okay, been uh, building this end here that goes on to the, uh, the rod. I've got it pretty well formed the way I want it. And it really wasn't too hard. It was just, uh, uh, it was kind of an estimate actually as far as where to bend it. And then I just took a piece of uh, flat coal roll here and stuck it in there. And this way I could kind of flatten the end of it. It kind of pulls back, but it will go back the other way too. And uh, So not too bad. It's almost like a, a factory. Now I got to drill a hole. Uh, got to drill this hole and uh, one right here for the rod to come through. Got a little piece of the flat metal in here to keep this from collapsing. And I'm going to use the starter bit so that I don't have any walking of the bit. And since that hole is, uh, uh, the rod is quarter inch, then of course the, uh, the hole needs to be quarter inch. We're just going to sacrifice that little piece that's keeping it from collapsing. So we'll go ahead and run a hole all the way through it. That way it keeps everything in line. Okay, here's our two rods. Uh, I've got this one sitting right in the middle of the eye of the old one, and the other end sitting right in the middle of the eye of the new one. So that gives us an inch and a half. Should be sufficient. I've just got to uh, uh, attach it in here. I think I'm going to do what they did and just uh, peen it and then pull it back down. Pull it out, peen it and push it back in. 
uh, may have to grind it a little bit on each side to get it back between here. But that all in all is our new rod. Should be just just what we need. Hey guys, I'm gonna attempt to peen this over. I'm gonna try to do it in a fashion that's uh, where I'm not hammering on it if I can. Just need a little bit on the end here. a little bit. I think that's going to do it. Just so that when it goes up into this, it's not going to come out. I'm going to go ahead and kind of weld it. Actually, I'll probably use the silver solder again on the back side. <clears throat> Just try and kind of drive that down there as far as it'll go. There, that should do it. Not sure whether you can see that or not. And I'll probably just uh, go ahead and put some uh, silver solder around it right here so it can't back out the other way. And there we go. And here's our our uh, new rod, eye to eye here, and an inch and a half longer at the end. Should work. Okay, now we need to extend the uh, chain guide and this is pretty much all we've got to do is put a little piece on it <clears throat> and then we'll uh, re-drill the hole. And it should fit right where we need it to fit. So let's see if we can get some weld on it.
think I'm making a good ground here. Okay, I've got the uh, new brake stay up here. I've got to weld the bracket on here before I... I'll take it off to complete the weld. I'll just get it tacked on now. Okay guys, I think we got everything back on the bike that we just fixed, repaired, lengthened, whatever we were doing to it. And uh, everything's looking like it ought to, ought to be okay. So let me take you around here and give you a view of it. First of all, we uh, extended the chain guide up to where it could bolt on here. So we just added, I don't know, about an inch inch and a quarter maybe 
And uh, the rest of it back here is all factory. Of course, we've got the swing arm painted. And we got the brake stay moved all the way up to the, uh, the pivot almost. Uh, it used to be right here. It went up to this, uh, this bolt hole on the back side there. So this should give us, uh, take away some of the shutter when you hit the brake. And this is our extended uh, brake rod. I've still got to uh, zinc coat it. So as soon as uh, I get a few more items, I'll go ahead and zinc coat that. And I want to put uh, self-locking nuts on here on both of these. Uh, I've got to get to the store and get some. But other than that, I think we're just about set on uh, the frame anyway. I will have to do some modifications up here for the pipe. Uh, I was able to find a 72-73 uh, a, uh, MX pipe and it mounts underneath the seat here. So there'll be a little, uh, I've got to put a little bracket right in here. So that's not a big deal, uh, but I've got to do that and then get it repainted again right there. It won't be too much I don't think I'll have to deal with. The uh, early pipe mounted at the shock mount, and this one goes underneath here and mounts to a rubber grommet right there. So that's our, uh, that's our modification to the swing arm. Everything back here is done. Unless I find when I put the longer shocks on that I have trouble keeping chain on. And then I may need to put a roller up here and a spring-loaded spring uh, tensioner down below. And one other thing we'll have to do is we'll have to lengthen the kickstand. When we, when we get shocks on and everything, uh, then we'll see what we got to do there. But we'll probably have to put about, a, I'd say, an inch, probably an inch and a half into that. Uh, but I don't know. I don't have shocks on order yet. I don't even know what to get yet. Still doing some research on that. So until I, uh, until I find out what I'm going to do and how much money I'm going to spend, uh, this is about as far as we can go. Oh, I did also make a plug. I didn't show it, but I made a plug to put in the uh, speedometer. It's just an aluminum plug with a O-ring around it held in with the original uh, hardware there. Oh, I guess we'll call this a wrap and uh, uh, we'll see where we go from here. I think I'm going to hop over on the Suzuki, uh, the 125 Suzuki and start some engine building. Of course, I've got to, I've got to do the crankshaft first. So that's probably the next thing and then we'll get into uh, stuff in the transmission and the crankshaft and everything in the cases. Everything's clean, everything's ready. I think I got all the parts, so we should be good to go on that. So thanks guys for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.